Hola, buenas noches. ¿Qué tal? Estamos a un minuto de comenzar. ¿Cómo estuvo su día? Hi, teacher. How are you? How was your day? Hi, very good. <laughs> very good. That's awesome. Yes. And you? It was a pretty good day, bananas. It was a wonderful day. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was not hot today. That's something unusual. Okay. Yeah. So we are about to get it started. How we are doing with the virtual platform? Are you advancing on the exercises or something? Uh, yes, advanced uh, number, exercise number four, remember? Mm -hmm. All right. From session number one or session two? Or still uh, session number one? Section two. Session two, that's awesome. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, that's good, 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 good. So let's uh, get us started because it is already 8 p.m., right? So we got uh, one hour. I hope that everyone is fine. It's glad, I'm glad to hear, to see you here. Thank you for being talking to me in this couple of minutes. And we are going to go to the next uh, part from the session number one, because we need to start session number two. Because the next coming week, we need to start session number three as possible so uh this is will be what we are going to be studying today it is uh, just the pronunciation part in pronunciation we have this uh part that it says intonation with direct stress um the intonation with the direct stress is uh the stress is the voice right when you raise your voice and it's like the accent that we have in Spanish. So basically here, the direct, is, the direct stress, it is on falling intonation, according to what we have here. And it is on the name of the person whenever we are talking or we are directing the speech to someone in a specific, right? Uh, acá, verdad, lo que vamos a ver es eh, el estrés de la palabra. El estrés de la palabra es como lo, la acentuación que nosotros tenemos en el español. Es, por ejemplo, las palabras, si ustedes lo recuerdan, las graves, las esdrújulas, ¿verdad? Si ustedes tienen niños que todavía están estudiando, usted lo recuerda de la primaria, ¿verdad? O de la secundaria, es lo mismo. Es donde va la mayor fuerza de voz. Sin embargo, acá en inglés nosotros no tenemos el acento tal cual como nosotros lo vemos en el español. Que si va en la vocal tal, que si va al final, que si va al principio, etc. Acá no. Acá nosotros tenemos uh, algo que se llama acento primario, acen estrés primario, perdón, estrés secundario y no estresada. En el caso de una palabra no estresada, eso quiere decir que no tiene ninguna fuerza de voz. Cuando nosotros vemos un direct stress, ¿verdad? Uh, direct address or direct stress en este caso, eh, es, en el, es una palabra, ¿verdad? Donde usted lo lleva, el direct address. Es esta palabra donde usted eh, pues eh, tiene la mayor fuerza de voz. Acá lo vamos a ver en el direct address, que es, uh, por ejemplo, cuando usted se refiere a alguien que es, por ejemplo, Paul, ¿verdad? Paul, Marie, Marie, Dr. Lee, Dr. Lee. Entonces, ahí es donde ustedes van a escuchar la mayor fuerza de voz. Este, eso sería, bueno, la, la explicación en esto. Eso solamente para que ustedes sepan que si se refieren a alguien en específico en una palabra, pues ahí tenemos que poner mayor fuerza de voz. Vamos a escuchar el audio. Por favor, si lo escuchan, déjenmelo saber. Page 38. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Is yes. it clear? Yes, I always. All right. So let's listen. Exercise 5. Pronunciation. Intonation with direct address. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice these statements with direct address. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. You look tired, Marie. I feel great, Dr. Lee. 
Mm -hmm. Would you like to listen at once again? Yes. Yes, okay. yes please. Yes, again, please. Yes, please. All right, sure. Let me play. Pronunciation. Intonation with direct address. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice these statements with direct address. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. You look tired, Marie. I feel great, Dr. Lee. All right. Once again, or it's fine? It's fine. It's fine. All right. So were you able to identify where was this, the address? Well, in this case, the stress or the voice where you increased the voice? You were able to identify it? Yes, no? Yes. Yes. All right. So this one is just uh, for you to know, right? Uh, it's something on phonetics. In reality, we do it just whenever we are talking right at the end we never get realized uh whenever you are just uh putting the address or distressing the word it's just uh, done it by itself right so here you have to remember that every time that you are going to be addressing directly to someone that name it's going to have just a raising intonation a little bit so you are really fit paul right so you are going to put there just a little bit of intonation on it so is there any question regarding this you have any questions no questions everything's no. fine all right so we are going to continue advancing this we have this last part on the session number one which is the conversation i'm a real fitness freak right as well we are going to be listening a conversation regarding to that one please uh pay attention and let me know if it is uh, good the sound or no right just give me one second Page 39, exercise 10. Are you able conversation. to listen? Yes. 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 Are you able to see the presentation with the conversation? Yes, no? Yes? Yes. 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 Good. Yes. Good. I'm a real fitness freak. Part A Listen and practice. You're in great shape, Keith. Thanks. I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week, and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, do you want to play sometime? Uh, how well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right, but I'm not very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. All right, would you like to listen at once again? Yes, 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 please. All right. Please, teacher. Page 39, exercise 10, conversation. I'm a real fitness freak. Part A, listen and practice. You're in great shape, Keith. Thanks. I guess I'm a real fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do aerobics twice a week, and I play tennis every week. Tennis? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh. Do you want to play sometime? Uh, how well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right, but I'm not very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. Okay. Is that okay like that, or would you like to listen it for the third time? Or it's okay like that? Yes? No? It's fine? Fine, teacher. Fine. All right. For the so moment. for the moment. Good. Awesome. So yeah, there is not any problem, right? Questions regarding to the vocabulary or to the pronunciation on this specific dialogue. Fitness break. Okay. Great. This one? Business break. No. Uh, uh, el título. Fitness freak. 
All right, yeah. uh, fitness freak, it is, uh, well, let's uh, get started with fitness. As you might notice, right, fitness is a person which is in well shape, right? Which is a slim, which is, has a well shape. A freak, freak in reality, uh, just the definition is something that is not normal, which is completely unusual. And if you see, right, uh, the shape of the guy, do you think that one it is normal? It's someone normal in reality? Just for the shape? A normal person, a regular person, a regular basis, do they have that shape? Yes, no, what do you think? What is the meaning of shape, teacher? Shape, it is uh, the body, right? The complexion of the body, right? La complexion del cuerpo. El shape es la complexion del cuerpo, ¿verdad? Uh, fitness, eh, como ustedes se lo pueden imaginar, es una palabra bastante común que pues na, ahora en día pues está viendo bastante. Es una persona que pues está en forma, por decirlo así, pero freak, en realidad, si usted se va a una definición, freak como definición, algo que no es usual, algo que no es normal. Entonces, en este caso, ustedes ven al chico, la complexión del chico es una complexión de una persona de regular basis, una persona en, en, en lo normal que nosotros conocemos, pues, ¿verdad? Haga o no haga ejercicio, ¿verdad? ¿Es así? Mm -hmm. uh. He has a very muscle. Yes, muscle? he got muscles, right? He got muscles. muscles. Entonces, un fitness freak es una persona, ¿verdad? Uno se puede entender como que está obsesionada con lo que es estar cultural y otra opción es que no sea normal, ¿verdad? Una persona que físicamente por el ejercicio ya no se ve tan normal como él, ¿verdad? Usted ve un físico culturista, pues ellos tienen sus músculos muy, muy desarrollados. Entonces, esa persona fitness freak es una persona que ya no, ya no está este, dentro del ámbito de lo normal de hacer ejercicio, sino que está obsesionado con el ejercicio, ¿verdad? Podríamos verlo de esa manera. Una persona inusualmente este, de buena complexión o obsesionada con el ejercicio. Así se puede definir, ¿verdad? Un obsesivo con, con, con el gimnasio, ¿verdad? Sí lo podríamos ver. No encuentro otra palabra en nuestro español como lo podríamos decir, ¿verdad? Real fitness freak. Is there any other one that you might have? Yes, no? Any other question? Go ahead. What is the meaning of the phrase? How well do you play? How well do you play? Well, uh, this one it is uh, just a uh, question phrase, right? How is como y well es bien. Que también. Aquí sería la, la traducción. Que también juegas, verdad? Que también juegas. Esa sería la traducción de toda la, 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 la oración. O que tan bueno eres jugando. ¿Verdad? Podría ser así. Ya traducido a nuestro español. Entonces, esta palabra how well, ya la vamos a ver dentro de un ratito. Este how well es como para preguntar qué tan habilidoso usted es en algo, ¿verdad? O si su habilidad, pues alguien le dice, mire, ¿y tú qué tan habilidoso eres? Por ejemplo, cosiendo, podríamos decirle así. Ah, no, yo me tardo mucho. ¿verdad? Otro, va, otro va a decir, no, yo soy muy rápido. Otro va a decir, ah, más o menos, ¿verdad? Entonces es para ver que también la persona se desenvuelve en cierta actividad. No necesariamente deporte, ¿verdad? Puede ser cualquier otra cosa. Podría ser, teacher, qué tan bueno, como qué tan bueno eres en, en algo. Qué tan bueno eres en algo. Uh -huh. Podría ser así, qué tan bueno eres en algo. Ahí es para saber, como le digo, la habilidad. If you see the answer, yeah, he said pretty well, I guess. Él dice que es eh, bastante, bastante bueno jugando, ¿verdad? Que él piensa, ¿verdad? Porque dice, I guess, right? So, uh, seems to be that he can play tennis. 
So in this case, uh, how well is uh, for you to know if you have the ability, right, to play or what is your, abli your ability to play, right? To say basic, intermediate, advanced, or something like that, right? Or any, any activity that you might have. Someone else, or um, am I answering the question or no? You tell me. Mm -hmm. And la última, cuando dicen a problem, it will give you a few tips. Es como que él le dará algunos tips. Yes. It's a contraction, but I will. No. I will, yes. This one is okay. I'll. I'll give you a few tips, yes. I will. It's this I will, ¿verdad? Yo te daré un par de tips o un par de consejos, ¿verdad? En este caso. I'll. Se pronuncia aisle. You are welcome. Someone else? Is there someone else? No? Everything's fine at the moment? Yep. No. No questions. All right. No. So if you don't have questions regarding to the conversation, right? So I'm going to give you five minutes for you to practice with one of your partners. We are 19 at the moment, right? So I guess we are 19. Mi cámara estaba encendida. O sea que todo el espacio mi cámara estaba encendida. All right. So let me just do something. Some story that someone is having a little bit of problems there, right? What happened? Yes. Yes, that happened. <laughs> you should hear once I was in... I was in classes a few, a few, yeah, last year, and someone turned out, turned on the the microphone, and it was funny. <laughs> you know, we were able to hear everything. But anyways, right? Uh, what we were saying. Um, just be careful, right, with your microphones because uh, we are a group, right? So we need to keep the environment for everyone safe, right? I know that you are at home and it's difficult to not have sounds, commercials, right? Like uh, the beep beep from the from the French fries, right? From the pan francés or anything else, right? Or la papa, la papa, la papa, right? And so on. But, but anyway, right? yeah, the tamales or anyone, right? That is selling anything, the crazy corn and so on. And la tolchuco and et cetera, right? So, but anyways, right? That's, uh, that's the way and that's we, what we have at the moment, so. But anyways, let's go back to our business. Um, I'm gonna place you in uh, groups, right? So you can practice the conversation with one of your partners and try to, to do it the natural as is possible. How is the natural thing uh, flowing, right? It's placing the feeling and the emotion. Yes, you are not the ones that are in the conversation, but try to feel it like if you were, right? Um, you are in great shape, Kate right? Like that. So try to, to do it natural. Natural explain emotions, right? On your conversation. Es intentamos hacerlo natural, ¿verdad? De eso se trata al final. Eh, que a pesar de que ustedes no son los que están en la conversación, traten de sentirlo como si lo fuesen. Eso les va a ayudar mucho a que su inglés sea más natural y más fluido. Entonces, si usted le pone emoción, es como en español, ¿verdad? Usted habla con alguien y sabe que está llorando porque le escucha su tono de voz. Entonces, lo mismo es en inglés, ¿verdad? Si alguien está triste, se le escucha por su tono de voz que la persona está triste, si está molesta, etc. Lo mismo usted tiene que hacer en sus diálogos. So, let me stop sharing. I'm gonna send it for you. The what? What am I gonna send in? Uh, the picture from the presentation, or I don't know if in the presentation that I have. Uh, no, Jocelyn, si logro entrar, tengo a Jocelyn acá. Jocelyn, no. Yeah, ella como que meshes en WhatsApp. Verdad que sí. Este, es que acabo de ver eso, ¿verdad? Le voy a mandar la, la presentación a ahorita. Link, o oh, el link, teacher, de, de, de la clase. No ok, sé. I'm going to send uh, once again the message. Maybe. 
that I sent for you in the beginning. Uh, no, it was not this, sorry. Please uh, let me know if you are able to see the, the conversation so I can go ahead and place you in groups. Are you able to see the conversation? And if it is well or no, you tell me. Are you able to see the picture from the conversation? Miren, es que no envía lo, lo que yo quiero enviar. All right. So, si ¿sí pueden ver el, lo que es yes, la teacher. conversación. Yes, Eso teacher. sí. Ok. Yes. Voy a intentar yes, enviarle teacher. el link a la compañera para que lo pueda tener porque otra cosa más está enviando. Así que, I'm going to place you in groups in the meantime that I'm resolving this chosen, right? So... Let me check. We are 20, which is mean that we need 10. Let me create the groups. Let me see if all of them are good. No. <clears throat> Just one second. Sorry, I was just once again with this cough that is not letting me to be, right? So there will be, why is this? All right, there will be a group of three. So try to practice there. In the meantime, I join uh, Jocelyn to the meeting. The breakup rooms are open. You are gonna have five minutes, right? Five minutes to practice. Uh, 825 I'm going to close the rooms go ahead and join to the rooms Well, all right, but I am not very good. No problem. Uh, I'll give you a file. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a few tape. tips. 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 Yes. But ahora comience usted. You're in great shape, Kate. Thanks. But this meeting is not being recorded. very good. No problem. I'll give you a few tips. Bye, we can be Okay. <clears throat> you are in great shape, Kate. Thanks, I guess. I'm a really fitness freak. How often do you work out? Well, I do a little bit. Dennis, this sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, do you want 
to play something sometime? Ooh. How well do you play? Pretty well, I guess. Well, all right. But I'm not very good. And no problem. I'll give you a few tips. Okay, thanks. Um, oh. some of them. Well, how, uh, teacher, how, yes. how the pronunciation aerobic? Aerobics. 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 Aerobics.
El how often, como nosotros lo decíamos, how often es con qué tanta frecuencia algo se va a repetir, ¿verdad? Eso usted lo puede utilizar con cualquier actividad, no solamente ejercicio. Luego tenemos how long es el tiempo, ¿verdad? Que usted se toma para hacer algo. Allí usted tiene que decir una respuesta ¿Verdad? Como 30 minutos al día o 30 minutos nada más, dos, a, dos horas, una hora y puede agregar más como nosotros lo tenemos acá en el fin de semana, en la, en la semana, al día, ¿verdad? How well y how good son un poco similares, ¿verdad? Son un poco similares. How well y how good le preguntan a usted qué tan habilidoso o qué tan bueno es haciendo algo, ¿verdad? En este caso, una actividad. Por ejemplo, acá, si ustedes se fijan en el how well, nosotros tenemos una actividad en específico, ¿verdad? Y aquí en el how good solamente nos dice si tú eres bueno haciendo alguna especie de deporte. Entonces podríamos hacer esa diferencia, ¿verdad? How good you can use it with be and how well you can use it with do. Pero en realidad las dos nos preguntan lo mismo, ¿verdad? ¿Qué tan habilidoso, qué tan bueno eres haciendo algo? ¿Alguna pregunta concerniente a esto? Si ustedes la tienen. ¿Pregunta? No, todo bien. No question, teacher. No question. All right. So let's see here, right? Nosotros tenemos uh, the questions with how and the short answers, right? Uh, here you are going to have more questions with how and short answers that are with them, right? That go with them. So are you able to see it well? Miran bien la imagen, sí. Yes. Okay, so we have, you're welcome. How many as you might be able to see it? How often? How long? How good? How far? How well? How are you, right? And how do you do? So these ones are another questions with how, and as you might see in this place, right, that for me is the left right, the left side, I have it, uh, the answers, right? So as you might be able to see here, you have different answers for this one. How far is, que tan lejos está, verdad? Que tan lejos está? And how do you do is another way to say, how are you, right? How do you do? It's a pleasure to meet you, it's a nice to meet you, know, okay, fine, and so on. So I will uh, send it to you this presentation. This is uh, regarding to the how are you and how are you doing, right? And the questions with how. Any questions regarding to this one? This is just more information for you, right? Esta es más información para ustedes, nada más si la llegasen a necesitar. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Questions, no questions, everything's fine? All right. Thank you. All right. All right. So if everything is fine, let's continue. And we are going to have this last part, right? This last part, they are uh, questions, right? And they are short conversations, right? We will have to practice with the partner. What does it mean? That once again, we are going to go on groups. Otra vez vamos a ir a grupos. What are you going to do? You are going to ask the question, right? Either how well, how good, or in this case, uh, for example, how long or uh, the how often. So you can go ahead and ask that questions. What is uh, the purpose here is that you can talk to your partner and ask the four conversations that you have here instead of writing. ¿Qué es lo que va a hacer acá? Usted va a completar con cualquiera de las cuatro que vimos al principio esta conversación. El propósito no es que lo escriba, sino que lo practique con el compañero que lo va a tener las cuatro conversaciones, ¿verdad? Entonces ustedes deciden cuál le van a agregar. Si va a ser how good, how well, how often, or how long, ¿verdad? Dependiendo de lo que ustedes tengan en su complemento para hacer esta oración. Si ¿Sí estamos bien. ¿Les parecen 10 sure. minutos? Yes, sí, sí. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you think that 10 minutes will be fine for you? Yes. Yeah, Muy you. poquito. Mucho. 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 No, fine. Fine. Well, or five minutes. 
Whatever, teacher. <laughs> okay. So you told me, right? So if it is going to be uh five minutes, okay. I'm gonna give you five minutes so we can go to the next part that is going to be um and you are going to have more practice in the past, right? So five minutes and let me stop sharing on it. So you can do it with your partner and let me uh just open up the breakup rooms. Parece que alguien se nos salió porque nos dejó solito a alguien. Entonces vamos a mover. Veamos. Get me just one second and I'm gonna move some people. There we go. So all of the rooms are open at the moment. Go ahead and join to your groups. All right. Okay. Teacher, we need Dinesh. What? <laughs> Hello? Dinesh. What uh, la imagen, el Oh! <laughs> ya no me acordaba, sorry. Uh -huh. Ese es el problema que <laughs> There we go. Creo que ahí la van a ver. Ahí va. Thank you, teacher. You're Thank you. welcome. Okay. And the first. All right. Okay. And the first, uh, number one. Uh, how, how, how well how well uh, how well do you play at volleyball at no lo tendrían que agregar seguramente sería how well do you play volleyball okay mm -hmm. Entonces, sería how well do you play volleyball en okay. este caso si ustedes uh -huh. se fijan, eh, si lo van a hacer con el, con el how well, tendrían que uh -huh. quitar el at. Pero en este caso, como ustedes ya tienen el at, entonces sería de la otra manera. How good are you? How good, okay. how good are you at volleyball? Ok. Uh -huh. uh, ok, porque ya tenemos el at ahí. Sí, ya está una preposición ahí. Entonces, en lugar de utilizar el otro, pues utilicemos el how good, ¿verdad? How good okay. are you at volleyball? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, the second. Okay. Um, the question is, how good are you at volleyball? Ah, uh, no, this is the first. The second. Oh, the second. Uh -huh. And uh, I think, I think, I think I. Yo pensé que iba, que iba a leer usted la respuesta. Ah, oh. I am. This meeting is being recorded. Entonces, por eso pienso que será have good, pero no sé si llevará el otro have good you o do you. Which one are you struggling with? ¿Con cuál están teniendo problema? Con la primera. Con la primera. Con la primera. Uh -huh. All right. So look at it just at the, let's look at it at the one that we have, right? Miremos cuál es, qué es lo que tenemos. We have here at volleyball. If you uh -huh. want to use how well, you don't have to have the preposition at. 
si ustedes quieren utilizar how well, no tendríamos que tener la preposición at. Entonces tendría que decir, how well do you play volleyball, for example. Right? So, aquí hay otra cosita más que tenemos que ver, que es la respuesta que nos están dando. ¿Con qué nos están respondiendo? ¿Con verbo be o con presente simple nada más? En la primera parte. Con presente simple. You sure? Ah, no, 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 con, con, con be, con tu be. Con tu be, ¿verdad? Ajá, Entonces, sí, 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 sí. Con el que a nosotros nos pre, con el que nosotros respondemos es con el mismo que preguntamos. Entonces, acá nosotros diríamos, how good are you at volleyball? Uh, I guess you, I am pretty good. Uh, you, uh, sí, sí, sí. Thank yeah. you, teacher. You are welcome. How are you? How are you? Mm -hmm. Bye. Ahora la segunda. Con mm -hmm. las... ¿Qué piensan? Okay, let's see. All right. I was able to hear some of you and some of you, I'm sorry, right? I forget at the very beginning to send it to you the picture, but I heard that some of you were having a little bit of inconvenience with the first question. Let's uh, remember something, right? Uh, from the basics, but let me wait for the ones that are still in the rooms. All right, so I'm missing a couple of seconds, right? So um, let's remember something from the basis, right? Regarding to the answers and how to do the questions, right? It's not only the complement that we have in the question. It's not only that, right? It, but it is also the answer that we have. Let's remember something and let's keep on mind this for all of our time, right? Just uh, let's learn it by heart. Every time that you have this type of exercise, look at first at the answers. The answers will let you know what you need to do. In the regarding for the first question, as you might able to see in the answer is given us the answer already, right? So here we have, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. So this one, it's telling us, look, I'm asking to you with BRB, right? not with the simple present. So the one that we had for the verb B is this one, right? How good, especially since we have at sports, we already have there the preposition, a que eres tan bueno, ¿verdad? So in that case, uh, you need to look at every detail that you have in your question and as well in your answer, because the answers are going to give you what is going to be your question form, right? So, acá, ¿qué es lo que vamos a hacer? Recordemos algo así como que desde el principio, ¿verdad? Desde que, desde el que venimos aprendiendo y mantengámoslo siempre, ¿verdad? Aprendámoslo de memoria. Con el mismo que usted está respondiendo, con ese mismo debe preguntar, ¿verdad? Así va a ser. O con el que a mí me preguntan, yo con ese mismo contesto. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que debe de haber una concordancia. Entonces, si ustedes se fijan acá, la primera... Eh, respuesta nos dice I'm, ese es el verbo be, 
¿Cuál es la que tenemos nosotros acá con el verbo be? Good, ¿verdad? Aparte de eso, yo sí claramente puedo utilizar how well, pero en el how well no me, di me dice en qué, pero yo no utilizo ninguna preposición, ¿verdad? Entonces, esa es otra situación. Nosotros tenemos que ir viendo cada uno de los detalles. Entonces, si yo voy a utilizar how well, how well do you play volleyball, por ejemplo, y aquí yo no tengo nada más, no tengo at. Y aquí yo no tendría en este caso I'm, ¿verdad? Sino que tendría que decir pretty well, about the average, not very well. Sin embargo, yo aquí ya tengo el verbo be. Entonces es how good are you at volleyball, ¿verdad? ¿Qué tan bueno eres en esto, verdad? Y ya pues contesto with I'm. Entonces ahí sería pues uh, la, la manera de hacerlo. Escuché que algunos de ustedes tal vez ya mayoría lo sabe y algunos pues tal vez se nos olvida un, un momentito, pero recordemos esto siempre. ¿verdad? Veamos la segunda. ¿Cuál eh, sería para ustedes la segunda? How long? How well? How long? How, how long? How long? Yes. How long? ¿Y cómo sería toda la pregunta? How long, do How long do you spend online? You spend online. Good job. Play cards, the number three. Which one? How often do you play cards? How often do you play cards? All right. Good job. And the number four, type. How well do you type? How, How well, well do you type? type? Type, right? Type. Is tape, is tape or type? Type. 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 Oh. The typing, yes. Type. Mm -hmm. Good job. So from this one, this is the end of session number one, right? Do you have any questions regarding to session number one? Is there any questions so far regarding to session number one? No. So, oh, no teacher, solo que hay que fijarse en la preposición. Esa sería la observación en la primera. Sí, tenemos que fijarnos en la preposición y en la respuesta que se nos está dando, ¿verdad? Más que todo es en la respuesta en esta clase de ejercicios, porque la respuesta le dice con qué usted tiene que preguntar. Porque la regla en general es con el mismo que a mí me preguntan, con el mismo yo respondo. Eso se llama concordancia, ¿verdad? Entonces, si a usted le preguntan en pasado, usted responde en pasado. No va a responder en futuro, ¿verdad? Si usted le, le preguntan en futuro, tiene que responder en futuro. Entonces, lo mismo es acá. Me están respondiendo con verbo vi, yo tengo que responder con verbo vi. Y por lo general, con el verbo vi, yo necesito dar algo más. Porque aquí le dice, tú eres bueno en, ¿verdad? Este ad que es en, en. Entonces, ahí pues es donde lo tenemos. Pero acá ustedes lo pueden identificar de esa manera o de la manera como yo les estoy diciendo que es la concordancia o si ustedes ven la preposición, ah, no, aquí es con how good, ¿verdad? Instead de how well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Ahí el que sí. ustedes se les haga más fácil de identificar, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Someone else? Teacher, uh, yes? in the second, in the second, um, sería, how, how long how long is spent online how long do you do you do you yes how long do you spend online um, aunque no no se no se no hay ninguna referencia a, a la a la a qué persona se está refiriendo ¿no? ¿Cómo no? Yo tengo la referencia porque aquí yo estoy contestando. Ay. Oh, sorry. Ajá. Aquí está. Tiene usted okay. la referencia. Cada vez que usted contesta con ay, directamente la pregunta va para you, ¿verdad? Es la pregunta es you. Uh -huh. yeah. Gracias. Right. gracias. You're welcome. ¿Alguien más? ¿Alguien más? All right. No one else. Any question? Any question. Good. 
So this is the end of session number one, right? I hope that you have learned just a little bit and some words, right? At least one is a progress. So let's go on session number two. And this is session number two, right? Session number two, it's named, we had a great time, right? So in this one, as you might be able to see, we are gonna be talking about the past. And just to get started, right? In order to get started, we have the leisure activities, which is what we are going to be studying. A leisure activity is an activity that you do on your free time, right? As it says here, right? As a quality of experience or as a free time. Free time is the spend away from business, work, job hunting, domestic chores, and education, as well necessary activities such as eating and sleeping, right? So as you might be able to see, I place some leisure activities here, which is they are the most common. Watch TV, go to the movies, play video games, surf on the internet, uh, read, listen to music, play an instrument, go shopping, do or play the sports, uh, spend time with the family, go out with friends or study, right? Some people, they do as a leisure activity, they study. So basically the leisure activities are the things that you do in your free time, right? Some things that are not sleeping or eating or not necessarily an education or domestic shirts, right? ¿Qué es lo que vamos a ver acá, verdad? Vamos a ver actividades eh, con las que usted, bueno, pasa tiempo, por decirlo así, ¿verdad? Son actividades en las que usted hace cuando tiene su tiempo libre, pero estas actividades, recordemos que no van a estar relacionadas con el trabajo, Tampoco, pues, eh, a veces con el buscar un empleo, si usted busca empleo, o en las labores domésticas o educación, y tampoco está relacionado con las actividades, pues, que son necesarias, como lo es, este, comer y dormir, ¿verdad? Tengo acá algunas de las actividades, como ustedes lo pueden ver en la imagen, eh, son algunas actividades que las, pues, las personas consideran como actividades pasatiempos, or when you have time libre. Tell me, what do you do on your free time? What do you do on your free time? Free time? I, play, free time? I play video games. You play video phone? games in your phone? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. What do you play? I play Mario Kart. Mario Kart, all right. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. A classic. All right. What about the others? Uh -huh. I watch TV. You watch TV? That's awesome. Do you watch movies or series, sitcoms? Uh, I watch Netflix. You watch Netflix, all right. <laughs> so let's see the subscription, okay, right? I they get back to the subscription. All right, awesome. Uh, Who else? I I like uh, uh, dress my my uh, dressmaker. You like to to what? Dressmaker. Dress and makeup. Yeah, no, oh, dress makeup. Oh, you like dress. to. Uh -huh. Oh, usted cose. Yes. O sea. Oh, all right. Por, sí. por pasatiempo. No por es, pasatiempo. no me dedico a eso. Pero me uh -huh. gusta coser mi ropa. Oh, I see. So you do the, the same when you, uh, that one it is uh, fashion dressing. Se llama eso, yeah. fashion dressing, right? <laughs> Fashion dressing. All okay. right. I see. Awesome. Oh, you see, right? <laughs> so if you see just uh if you see Olga with a dress, right? That it will be a creation from Olga's Fashion Corporation, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Did someone else do something else? Tell me. Let's think about these questions, right? Let's think about these questions. Do you have enough free time? What do you say? Do you have enough free time? No, I don't have teacher. No, I don't have. It says it's not enough. Excuse right. me, teacher. Yes? How do you say bordar? Embroidery. Embroidery. I love embroidery. 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 Do you like it? Yes, I like. Oh, I... wow. <laughs> do you do? Do you do on your free time? Yes, yes. Embroidery? And, and yeah. paint in the, in tela. 
Y pinto en tela. Oh, paint as well in canvas. Yeah. Canvas painting. All right. Yeah. Canvas me... painting, right? Go ahead. Manualidades. Handicraft. 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 Mm -hmm. Handicraft. Yes. yes. All right. Yes, that's awesome. I love handicraft too. Yes, I love to do handicraft. All right. So here, right, this is the one that we were discussing. What do you do in the free time? The other ones? Uh -huh. The other ones? Okay. All right, so let's see. Where do you spend your free time? Where do you spend your free time? At home, on a mall, Bicentenario Park? Where? If you at go home. Out, at home, all right, at home. At home, at home, teacher. At home, all right, yeah. No se puede salir. Oh no, it's just something, it's crazy. I believe me, it's crazy. It's crazy. Nowadays, it's been crazy. So be careful, right? Keep all the healthy measurements. So who do you spend your free time? Tell me. Boyfriend, girlfriend, friends, my family. 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 All right. Yes. Family. With my husband, my son, or huh? my sisters, or okay. my father. Or your parents? Parents, all right. Your yes. parents, all right. That's awesome. Good, good. Someone else, all right. Who do you spend your free time? Mm -hmm. Teacher, I oh. spend my free time at home cooking okay. the dinner. I usually i I spend my free time cooking mm -hmm. the dinner. Cooking the dinner, all right? Yes. Cooking the dinner. Every day. Every day. Oh, wow. Who do you live with? Do you live with your husband, your babies, uh, your parents? I, I live with my nephew. Oh, with your nephew. All right. Yes. That's awesome. Good. That's awesome. So that's wonderful, right? That you are not alone. When you are alone, you get crazy. Believe me, right? I was alone the whole quarantine. <laughs> Yeah, so you get crazy. So that's wonderful. What else do you do on your free time? Someone else that would like to share? Alguien más a quien le gustaría compartir? No one else? I love to spend time with my family. You with your family? That's good. Yes, that's good. If you can spend time with your family, that's the best way that you can spend your free time, right? Along with your family. So let's see, uh, all right, uh, all right. So I guess I have the, I will send it to you today, uh, both of the presentations, session one and session two. So uh, we are about to finish. I think uh, the dialogue is not too wait long. We are going to listen to uh, this dialogue just before that we go, which is, uh, do you do anything special, right? Rick and Mac. So please uh, let me know if you are able to hear the conversation and we are going to play that in this last minute that we have, right? Let me see. All right. You're able to listen? You're able to listen it, yes? No, no. All right. Yes? No, teacher. No, teacher. No, listen the audio, teacher. No pueden escuchar el audio. No. No. Nothing. Unit 7. Now? We had a good yeah. yes. 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 Page 44, exercise 2, conversation. Did you do anything special? Part A. Listen and practice. So... What did you do last weekend, Meg? Oh, I had a great time. I went to a karaoke bar and sang with some friends on Saturday. How fun! Did you go to Lucky's? No, we didn't. We went to that new place downtown. How about you? Did you go anywhere? No, 
I didn't go anywhere all weekend. I just stayed home and studied for today's Spanish test. Our test is today? I forgot about that. Don't worry. You always get an A. Okay. So it's just uh, nine, right? So we are going to listen it tomorrow. Mañana lo vamos a escuchar Wednesday again, right? They are worried about the Spanish test and we are worried about the English test, right? So that's something funny. Is there any question before that we go? Hay alguna pregunta antes de que nos vayamos? No, teacher. No question. No. All right. So if there is no question, it was a pleasure to see you today, this hour. Please practice, continue advancing on the virtual platform, and we will see us each other tomorrow. Rest and relax and eat something if you haven't done it. Bye-bye. Take care for tonight. Bye-bye. Good night. 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 Good night.